In this video we will discuss why the British Isles, the islands of uh, the United Kingdom, Scotland and Ireland have that many terriers because if you look at all the terriers the majority is coming from these, um, these uh, premises. So first off, what is a terrier? A terrier is a dog that normally goes to ground. It's from the uh, French terrier which means burrow, so they normally go underground. But nowadays they also use that term for a very broad uh, specification of dogs. Why is that? If you look at the Black Russian Terrier, as they call them, or Aradale Terrier, Black Russian Terrier can be even up, up to 60 kilograms. And it's completely not a dog that goes underground, of course. That being said, so why, if it is a French word, terrier, or even before that more a Roman word terra from earth, why is it then that in the British Isles there are so many terrier breeds? There are many reasons. First is, the, the English are very proficient at breeding. So what does that imply? They make dogs that are very capable and good at what they do therefore also they have uh, made a big stamp on the Molossa world with the English Mastiff, Bull Mastiff but also on the Hound world for, for hunting and uh, on the Terrier world but I will come back to that later but also for example the Game Dogs eh? they developed the Bulldogs they developed the, the Bull and Terrier and why is that? Because they are very uh, into breeding the best of the best. And they were also in, that, in the past a very dominant world force. Even now, they are together with uh, the United States, the dominant force in the world. Uh, so that being said, the other thing is, um, so if you're breeding better dogs than other countries, your dogs are more sought after. And if you have, uh, better dogs, they will just push away the other dogs because they are less popular, because less capable and therefore you get a lot more influence in the terrier game. The other thing is they also had access to a lot of good dogs and how, well, why is that? For example, you could have a dog that's good at uh, hunting, quite good at hunting, but then you, you find another dog and that's uh, perhaps not as good as hunting and you will dilute the, the strong hunting teams again. But with the uh, Terriers in England this is different. Because they also had blood sports, blood sport contests for example. How many rats can be killed in a limited time frame by a dog. And then divided by the weight of the dog. So you get dogs that are extremely capable and also extremely small. So. An extremely small dog is of course very able to go underground. And a dog that is extremely capable but is not willing, for example not game enough, is also not suitable for the rat picking game. And also perhaps they're suitable for really uh, hunting and regardless of the outcome. If you have uh, a lot of trouble with the predator you will be glad that the predator is dealt with. No matter what the cost in, that, that in those times. Because they were killing the livelihood of those uh, peasants. So that being said, that gave the blood support area gave an, an access to premium uh, dog material. So the best dogs could then be bred because they also had interactions and champions were sought after. So they would, uh, instead of diluting the good blood, they would amplify it because they wanted to go improve upon and the next generation and again smitter or smash a new record. That's one point. The other point is regarding the blood sports that they also influence the terrier game. Why is that? As known in the blood sport they use bulldogs uh, to fight each other but also uh, bulls or bears but also the bull and terrier was born there and it wasn't uh, you say it's a synergy between terriers and uh, bulldogs, fighting bulldogs. 
Not the Bulldogs as we see now, but those fighting Bulldogs more resemble one that Staffordshire Bull Terrier than they do the current day Bulldog. So that gives you a lot of uh, additional access to blood because it was there. They already have this, this blood sport arena type of thing and they have their good breeding practices. The other thing is that terriers are like a land race. So they all their uh, different regions wanted to have their own different area, sometimes because the need of the region were a little bit different. For example, the black black fells had a little bit different needs than the white fells. These are black fells, ratidil terriers. So they needed a, a sturdier dog, a dog with more gameness and more potential to take care of the prey instead of the white fell. Because the, they, those uh, fells of the black fell country, for example, Petterdale area, were so hard they could not be dug. So a dog had to do it all itself. Different type of dog could be injured more, but would get the job done. Uh, instead of just barking at it and locating it. I'm not saying that all white fells are like that. Eh? White fells can also be quite sturdy. All terriers have quite a lot of temperament, but there, is, there are differences. That is something I'd want to imply with this comment. The other thing is, so if all regions are very proud of breeding their own stock, you have ample accessibility. And there were some other factors, and those are things that you might not think of so easily. Such as regulations. And I will come back to that later. Because the English always were a, a hunting crowd, so they love hunting. Also, if you look at fox hunting, this is still a thing, even in modern day Britain. So, but let's go back to that again. Because in the, in the past, of course, they hunted the deers and the hares and the, and the rabbits, but they did not like it. And uh, a dog that is able to chase a, a rapid animal, such as a deer or a, a rabbit or a hare, needed to have all the all the maneuverability and also the ability to uh, shape direction, change direction. If you look at those tails, the right one is a lot short, shorter than the left one. And how can that be? Because in England they tax you if you did not have a cut tail. Then you were taxed for having a dog, which was quite costly. So only nobility could have them. Also running dogs were only allowed for nobility. And a very heavy dog would also imply a lot of food intake, which is costly. And if you are a peasant, this is very hard to do. So they, those things helped uh, breeding smaller dogs that were very capable. And the English already knew, because they started with these war type of dogs, uh, the Molosses, for example, English Mastiff. And then they bred a, a more capable but smaller uh, warrior type of dog out of that, the Bulldog. And the Bulldogs were very capable also against bear and uh, bull, as the name implies, which are formidable quarry. So if a relatively small dog was capable of doing that and uh, breeding them down a little bit more in size, it would still offer a dog with a lot of capabilities. Also, the benefit of a smaller dog is that they could go on the ground and deal with foxes and badgers, which would normally have a big impact on livestock. Also, rat infestation, the plague and all those other aspects, it's a good thing to have a dog that is fast, small and capable to deal with them. So all those factors had a big, uh, big resemblance and big influence on the development of so many terrier breeds in the, in the UK. Another thing is nomenclature. For example, uh, these dogs are called terriers, but there are other dogs on other continents. For example, in Germany, they have Dachshund, which means badger dog, but it does not have the name terrier in it. But it could be, if it was developed in, the, in England, it would, would be named a terrier. Also the schnauzer or the pinche. Pinche means uh, the bite and schnauzer has more of a rougher coat. 
those dogs are quite, especially the, the smaller variety, are quite comparable to terrier breeds. Yeah? And the medium is still not a very big dog. And they were there, the extermin, the extermin especially uh, vermin, rats, but also to guard. So a little bit different roles. And they were never bred as focused on their hunting ability, gameness, and other attributes. But they are nice dogs nevertheless. So sometimes in different regions dogs are called different names. I also mentioned this uh, Russian terrier, black Russian terrier, which of course is not a terrier. It carries uh, a little bit of Aridol terrier blood in it, but the rest is uh, giant schnauzer especially, and a little bit of uh, Rottweiler, and perhaps Newfoundland blood. Yes, also Newfoundland blood is in there, so terrier would be very little. Also a little bit about nomenclature. They use dogs to hunt uh, vermin, especially predatory vermin, such as badger and fox. And a nephew of the badger is the, the otter. And they also developed a, a dog to, to deal with that, namely the Aerodale Terrier, which is a lot bigger. But the Aerodale Terrier was a dog that has a lot of hound blood in it. So, I would not call that a pure terrier. It has a lot of otter hounds. Uh, also, a, uh, a hunting breed developed in England. Blood in it and a little bit of terrier blood. This is like a half and half. It should be a, a hound and terrier, or terrier and hound, in my opinion. But it was also called a terrier. And also, all those dogs with uh, the, the boo influences, uh, for example, the American uh, Pit Bull Terrier, that is now a show variety American Savage Terrier. Uh, English Bull Terrier, miniature and uh, normal size. Yeah, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier were also all called Terriers. Also the, the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, Terry Blue Terrier, all too big to go to ground, but capable of dealing with a badger, of course, of pulling the badger. was a little bit different than really going to ground. So those aspects also played a role. I hope this video gives you some insight why the British Isles have so many terrier pigs out.